it's Ivy Slater, and you're listening to Her Success Story Podcast, a show where gutsy businesswomen share their success journey. Hi, this is Ivy Slater. Welcome to today's episode of Her Success Story. Today, I have an amazing guest. I'm I'm thrilled and pleased to have been introduced to her and had some time to get to know Susan. Susan Gold had a background in the entertainment industry. She um, got out of college and moved on to the, uh, the global talent world at ICM, later Fox. What Susan was really known for is her boldness, her willingness to take risks, and never being afraid to ask. One day she asked Andy Warhol to do an on-camera ant- commercial for Pontiac, which was unheard of. Somehow, Susan got him to say yes. Um, there's many, many other things Susan's boldness um, was just a trailblazer with. Today, Susan has truly embraced a new chapter of her life, as many of us have. Keep, um, she's keen on leaving legacy to help others heal from similar traumas that she had in her background that she'll share a little bit on today. She has written on toxic family, transforming childhood trauma to adult freedom. Her new book is, is 100% that quest. Today, Susan is doing workshops, webinars, retreats, and helping others drop out, drop their outdated storylines story and programming in exchange for living from the heart in an authentic freedom as adults. Susan's boldness has brought her to giving passing by New York and LA as long-term lifestyles where she lives and finding her place at peace in the calmness and beauty of Montana. So Susan, thank you. I can't wait to talk more about your background and what you've accomplished. Hey, Ivy, I'm glad to be here with you. Thanks for what you're producing. I'm so bowled over by your guests, your content, your conversations. So thank you for what you're adding to the conversation. Well, I'm just going to say a huge thank you for coming from somebody from your from the entertainment industry, having worked at Fox, et cetera. That means a lot. So share a little bit of the backstory. Let, let's start a little bit at the beginning. Um, I I wanted to get to New York City when I was 10 years old on my beanbag chair in my basement watching Barbara Walters on my belly. I was like, please, how do I get out of here and, and go to New York and be like that woman? <laughs> it was a very chaotic home that I left the morning after I graduated high school. I was terrified to leave when that moment came, but I had always dreamed of it. And um I was 19 when I was living on my own in Greenwich Village. I had created an arts management internship before that was even the standard norm. I had a fight (laughs) to get out of the tract and do an internship, um, negotiate with the head of the department and then the head of the fine arts school where I was going. Um, And that really opened some doors and I went immediately upon graduation from college, but I wanted to work above 14th Street. I had been working below 14th Street. So back in the day, I'm actually going to, I'm going to like share a little bit. Okay. So back in our time, um, below 14th Street was very, very deep in the arts. We're above 14th Street. You're thinking more of like that Madison Avenue, the advertising world. So that that's a little bit of a point of reference, listeners. Yeah, thanks for that, Ivy. I just feel like everybody <laughs> knows. I it? get it. I'm yeah. like, I'm walking the streets with you <laughs> as you're sharing. I wanted to to work in one of those glitzy skyscrapers. <laughs> How vain is that? But um, yeah, I did. People told me you're you know you're not going to get into the entertainment industry. You don't know anybody. You don't have a a degree in communications. And I just poo pooed it. I never listened to any of that. And I just asked questions. I asked people I knew that might know someone connected. And it led me to an interview at ICM and I started to assist two sales agents, even though I didn't know anything about that. (laughs) And to make money on the side, Ivy, I was a personal trainer and Barbara Walters became my client. So you, you were so much smarter than me. 
when I, I, this is something I don't know if I've ever shared um, in, in any of my stories. My first job out of college, my first full-time job is I worked as a receptionist for a commercial film production company where we produced commercials and to make money so I can buy food, I taught exercise classes on Saturday mornings for $8 an hour. That gave me three classes, $24. It gave me food for the week. Wow, Ivy, who knew? <laughs> <laughs> but I you guess, had Barbara Walters as a client. <laughs> I guess it served us. Yeah, she was amazing. Uh, she was a girl's girl and so supportive. One morning I, I rang her doorbell at 7 a.m. and she said, Susan, get in here. What is going on with you? And I was so tight lipped, but I had been sexually harassed in the workplace the day before I'd left for um, my boss formed his own agency. And I went because I knew I was going to learn how to negotiate contract deals. Whereas, you know, at the desk at ICM, you know, you didn't learn anything. It was all done behind closed doors then. So um, she got it out of me and she said, I'm coming to work with you this morning. We're going to confront this gentleman together. And I said, thank you so much, Barbara. I think I got it, but thank you. And I did confront my boss that day and, uh, he promptly fired me. I had two and a half months of cash in the bank and, um, I had just extricated myself from an abusive relationship. Um, I'm embarrassed to say the gentleman held the purse strings, um, but that was the truth of the matter. And Barbara said, come assist for Merv, her fiance. He was running Lorimar, a film distribution company at the time. And I said, Barbara, I, I can't be anybody's assistant anymore. So I decided that I was going to match celebrities with brands and do talent deals. And Donnie Deutsch, who's a great entrepreneur and iconic host now, was running his dad's ad agency then. And he said, I really want Andy Warhol for my Pontiac client. Do you think you can get him? I was like, I don't know. I'll try. And I couldn't get anybody at the factory to pick up the phone. So I took the subway down, knocked on the door. And Fred, Andy's business manager, answered. So I explained why I was there. And he said, come back tomorrow at the same time. And I'll let you talk to Andy. Sweating bullets, I showed up, but I thought there was hope if he's allowing me to have a conversation with Andy about the commercial. And finally, the double doors opened to Andy's studio and it was dark in there and I was terrified to go in. I thought, what is going to happen to me? <laughs> but there was a pin spotlight coming down on this platinum hair going 17 different directions and three little pugs, you know, with those smudged yes, of course. spaces were running around the studio and tugging on his pant leg. So I go in, I introduce myself. I'm talking about why I'm there. There's no eye contact. There's no pulse, but he is marking these dogs and grabbing them like they're little babies. And I notice this. Finally, he looks at me directly in my eye and the room got quiet. And he said, now, really, why should I do this? And I just paused. And I said, because you can have the pugs in the shot with you. And he said, okay. Brilliant. <laughs> and and you know, so there is something about when we pay attention to the details and um, it, it's so, it's, I, I have so much to say, Susan, um, it's your interview. <laughs> The, you know, when we pay attention to the details, meaning when we see what's important to a person and we give that to them, we create a win-win. And it's too often missed. We're too often in our head trying to move or sell what's important to us and not paying attention to what's important to everybody else. And when you actually focus on what's important to somebody else, you will transcend a sale, a business and everything else around it. And I'm grateful. I learned that lesson for safety growing up. It was very chaotic between my parents and I was their broker um, for their arguments. So I learned to intuit very quickly. Um, and just that had that skill set and capability, but I sure do wish they taught that in business school today. <laughs> they totally, they totally miss that. They totally, totally miss that. I will say. So let's jump forward a little bit. You, you built a, a successful career in New York. You went on to LA. Um, what has brought you to today? Because you have done amazing things. 
So that little intuitive voice that can be so annoying and we like to kick under the carpet was saying, hey, you've got more. There's more mission and more purpose. It's been a fun ride, but time to go really deeply inward and then deliver the message outward. So I didn't think I'd leave the sunny state of California ever, but um, the universe seems to have had other plans. And here I am reassigned to Montana, which was not even on my bucket list. Um, when I was in New York City, I had a cabin in the Catskills and I loved nature. I, I didn't miss New York once I left, but I did miss that little cabin in the Catskills. And here I am. It's the Catskills times 10. It's absolutely exquisite and an expansive skyline. I finished um, my first book, which is a memoir. It's my personal and professional trajectory, but I also believe it's my purpose and my true mission. I had a, a very refined privilege of serving those that were household names and had a nice look into what that world is really like. But, but where I am now is my purpose, and that's to create conversation around a very taboo topic, which is toxic family lineage. I believe that we're not really that brazen to look deep into the family lines and see the effect that it's having on us personally and professionally today. So it's interesting, you know, we've heard the word, you know, toxic work culture. We, it is commonly used today and very aware, and there's a high level of awareness around it and continuing to be talked about. Um, We've heard toxic family, maybe not as much, but the way you phrase it of toxic family lineage is something I've never heard before. Can you share more about that? Well, Ivy, don't don't blame me if I sound too Southern California hooey, but when I say lineage, I mean back in the bloodlines, my parents came from parents who had beaten, been beaten and abused and their parents had been beaten and abused. And it was hurt and damaged children, raising hurt and damaged children for generations. And that I believe transfers through the bloodline. And I was carrying certainly so much shame and blame that honestly, when I really dissected it, didn't belong to me. It's almost like Robert De Niro in the mission carrying that big bag of crap up the side of the cliff and he doesn't want to drop it. And that's what I'm doing now, helping people to drop that bag of stuff that doesn't belong to them so they can actually operate from a stable platform and in freedom. It is so challenging whenever we want to break any pattern. Okay. It could be a pattern of um, shifting eating habits, right? Dropping sugar, a pattern of doing more exercise, shifting your exercise, a pattern of doing follow up, doing networking and doing your follow up. You know, there are so many patterns that benefit us, and there are so many patterns that don't serve us. The shifting of any pattern is, takes work, it takes commitment. Um, how do you, how have you navigated? Cause you clearly have shifted. It seems shifted a pattern of your lineage. First, I had to become aware that I was operating in an old outdated system. And then I had to accept it, which was difficult because that means I have to step outside this safe construct, this little cubicle that I've created that's kept me boxed in, but feeling safe because I look and feel like everyone else, right? Which is false. So acceptance and awareness, and then I can take action to shift it. And it's a shift on a cellular level. That is so true when you talk about truly shifting on a cellular level. Yeah. And it's, I don't know. I, can you expand a little bit more about that? Because it's not often talked about. 
it's not just a name. It's not just coming from my brain and my mind. And it took me a long time to really connect this because I poo-pooed it. I didn't have time to go into my heart space. I mean, when I first started this work, I wanted someone to hand me a list of emotions, please just hand me. I know happy, sad, mad, glad, sort of, <laughs> but, but anything more. And why is that with purpose and with point? And how is that going to serve me from a personal and professional level? And that's what's really trans transformed me and solidified my success because I've dropped into my authenticity as a human being and unlayered that layer of shellac and grime and duct tape and Gorilla Glue and Saran Wrap that's been around my heart that I thought was actually my shield and my defense and my power. And what I've realized is it's the opposite. So driving you to write a book, you know, um, The t Toxic Family, Transforming Childhood, childhood Trauma, into adult freedom, which happens first, the chicken or the egg, you know, because it, it's, we, we, many of us do all types of development in a variety of ways, personal, professional development. And I think people who are listeners who list, come in and listen to her success story are, are fairly very educated, you know, and do a lot of self, self-development to put all of that into a book is one of the bravest, bravest things. I, and I've written books, but I could write a business book, but there's something else. And when I start writing about my, you know, and I've touched on some of my personal kudos to you and hats off. I truly think taking your story and putting that into a book is one of the bravest things. Thanks for the acknowledgement, Ivy. Um, honestly, I went kicking and screaming and felt I didn't have a choice. In 2007, I was told by an Irish seer I had this book to write, and I kicked it promptly under the carpet. And then in 2019, I was told back to back by intuitives, this is your legacy, and this is your, your mission. And um, I went reluctantly, and I, I love my family. They've given me so many positive lessons. And I have a relationship with them today, but um, the universe had other plans. And sometimes you just have to surrender and listen. And it has been profound and it has been changing the conversation. And there has been great insight as a result. So I think I'm on the right path. You know, hats off to you that you can talk about the background and have a relationship with your family. That is golden. I think it's a new perspective. Why wait till I get to heaven for the life review? Why not just do it <laughs> here and now? So what has surprised you in this journey? The amount of push-pull I have within um, and what has come to me, the lessons, both professionally and personally, and then to shift the way that I perceive those experiences. It's no longer that it was all foisted upon me and I was some victim or martyr that walked through it. The shift has come in seeing this all as a necessary script to play out the scenarios so I could actually evolve from a soul perspective, the way that I had hoped to when I came in. That's a huge shift in my perspective. And, you know, thinking about other, other leaders, the leaders coming up, the, the, the women, the, and, it, and it's so much more than women now. It is, you know, every person who's had challenges, the amount of risks you have taken, the boldness you have shown, um, what tips would you leave to the, the next generation of bold leaders? So not just for the next generation, but the, the generation that- Our generation too. Living. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Follow that inner voice. It's, it's your soul speaking with you. Follow it. 
as best you're able and step up, try not to look to the right or the left and judge it, live from your heart and openly. And it's not the easier, softer way, but you will be so much more comfortable in your body. I love that. Truly, truly listen to ourselves. And I think we're in a very busy world. It's a very busy world. There's a lot of technology around us. There's people, et cetera, et cetera. And it's easy to get caught up in the busy and forget to listen to our inner voice. So I think that is brilliant. Susan, thank you for joining me here today on Her Success Story. I want to thank you, Ivy. And again, it's a great conversation that you're bringing to the table. So thank you. And listeners, you definitely want to check that, check out Toxic Family, Transforming Childhood Trauma into Adult Freedom. Most importantly, because as we step into our adult freedom, we can and do, we have the ability to do and be everything we've ever dreamed of being on our terms. So Susan, thanks again. I always say at this point in our podcast, as we close the show, take a minute. Thank you for listening in. Take a minute and give yourself a gift. What is your biggest takeaway, your aha, from joining us today? What resonated with you? Write it down. You can put it in your, the show notes here. You can put it in the phone. You can put it on a sticky piece, sticky, a post-it note, whatever, whatever floats your boat. But write it down and decide what action you're going to take forward for yourself from joining us here today. Thank you again and look forward for you joining us for many more wonderful interviews like we had with Susan Gold today. See you next time. Don't need your approval anymore because I've got mine.